Hadfield Environmental Systems. We're a uh, manufacturer that's based in Staffordshire, about 30 minutes from here. And uh, we build small scale waste to energy plants. And um, what uh, I would like to, to really describe is how these kind of plants uh, can help you guys with your waste issues. And hopefully we can identify with, um, with some of the problems that I talk about here. Uh, as a business, we've been going for about uh, 30 years and we export our equipment to over 100 different countries around the world as well. So, Just to give you a bit of uh, an introduction to the, uh, the points that we're going to discuss. So we're going to just have a quick brief intro into sort of the current risk to waste management, how we fall into those, a bit of an overview of our small scale waste to energy plants, a little bit about the permits surrounding them, and we'll go into planning briefly and then we'll talk about the return of investment uh, on these plants as well. So uh, the, probably the main factor of why you would want to, to, to look at something like this. And then we'll end up with a, a question and answers phase for this as well. So <laughs> starting off, so risks to waste management and why people might want to look into something like this. So firstly, maybe something everyone can identify with, uh, ever increasing landfill costs. So, in recent years they've just uh, increased increase and that's gate fees but also transportation costs as well. Um, potential lack of landfill capacity in the UK, uh, several news reports talking about potential landfill uh, problems certainly in like uh, exporting waste abroad. Um, potential tariffs on waste as well so uh, we'll go into a bit more detail later but countries around the world put in import taxes and again maybe Brexit uh, exporting waste to uh, EU countries. Another risk to waste, specifically plastics, is potentially the reclassification of certain waste types. So um, there's a potential for certain plastics, car plastics, to be reclassified as hazardous which would have an impact on the, how they're disposed and potentially costs associated to that disposal as well. And then the rejection of waste from traditional waste importing countries. And again, there's several news reports about that from all over the world. And then talking a little bit about how government policy uh, impacts waste disposal costs and how that might uh, challenge future waste disposal routes. So we're talking about uh, some of the news reports. So here's a couple of examples here. So. Uh, there, there's lots of these that keep popping up in the news, I'm sure you've seen. So the top one here, Malaysia sends back uh, 3,000 tonnes of plastics to the country of origin. So this is just really highlighting the issues of uh, where waste goes in the future and, and how the, the options for waste disposal are narrowing. Uh, equally, I think it was this last year, China decides to ban 24 different grades of rubbish as part of their national sword campaign. Again, the, the main, main key point to take away with this is that China is probably the, the biggest waste importer, so waste isn't just a, an issue for the UK, but this is a, a, a global issue for how people treat their waste in the future. Uh, talking about tariffs, so this is an example of uh, how potentially RDF is going to be taxed um, in January um, 2020, um, and again, seems to be a running theme with taxation on waste in the future. And then government policy a little bit closer to home, so landfill tax is the corner of Scotland zero waste plan. So again, government pressure is on, on looking where potential waste will go in the future. So hopefully I'm going to identify certain um, areas of where we can possible outlets for those as well. So hopefully people look at those and they can identify with a few of those problems and challenges that they, they might have with their waste. So the future as we see it, um, uh, small scale waste to energy plants. So what is small scale? Well, small scale is for us, it's a machine that processes less than three tonnes of waste per hour and that comes down to permitting. So we'll talk a little bit more about permitting uh, later on. identifying certain uh, waste types that will be suitable for um, these types of plants. So effectively uh, a waste to energy plant can burn any type of waste. However, there are certain waste streams that are derived from oil such as plastics which will be a lot more cost effective to, to run through a combustion plant. So if you have something of a, a higher energy value 
you use less auxiliary fuel to, to run it. And equally, if you have something of a low energy value or a high moisture content, you'll use more fuel to, to run the plant. And fuel's probably the biggest outgoing for running these kinds of systems. So we'll talk a little bit about return on investment later on, but you'll see, again, hopefully people will identify Clark uh, with some of these wa uh, waste products. So car plastics, mixed polymers, we waste, Murph rejects, again, all, all plastic derived really. And again, Costs for uh, disposal come back to the return on investment of the plant. So, the higher the energy value, the quicker the, the, quicker the return of investment. So, what to expect from a small scale waste to energy plant? So, the next couple of slides uh, detail some of our most common layouts that, that we produce. Um, however, every site's different, every waste type's different, so we build them um, to uh, a customer's requirements. So, the next few slides um, will ring true for most sites. So, what I intend to do is just